must be Mrs. Evans. I hope you didn't have any trouble finding us. Oh, no, ma'am. I heard you all the way from the bus stop. <laughs> Esther Roll, Summer of My German Soul. Esther Roll was a dancer, an actress, but above all, she was an advocate who stood at the forefront of a small revolution that reshaped the representation of black families in media during the tumultuous 70s. She was mostly known for her iconic role in Good Times, which was controversial to say the least. It was said that the cast members didn't even speak off set, let alone had each other's phone numbers. As close as they looked in the show, it was nothing but. Stick to the end of the video to find out which cast member didn't attend Esther Rowe's funeral. Her commitment to authenticity and refusal to perpetuate negative portrayals marked her as a pioneer in the entertainment industry. And whether you knew it or not, she gave the momentum needed for black TV shows to break past conventional boundaries and stand out. Shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and The Jeffersons probably wouldn't have been around if not for her. But who is the woman who so drastically changed the media landscape? Let's find out. Born on November 8, 1920 in Pompano Beach, Florida, Esther Elizabeth Rowe was the 10th of 18 children of Bahamian immigrants to the United States. Her father, a farmer, had a knack for storytelling and was the one who inspired Esther and her siblings to form their drama troupe. Esther had been inclined to get involved in creative arts, initially inspiring to be a writer. In high school, Esther's English teacher recognized her talent for acting and enrolled the young girl in drama classes. She studied at the Yale School of Drama and the Actors Studio in New York City. In the 1940s, Esther found her footing as a dancer with the Asadeta DeFora dance troupe, becoming a respected performer in the dance world for the next 12 years. Later, she joined the Calypso Carousel, where she had similar success. By 1955, Esther got married to Oscar Robinson. The marriage was going strong until it wasn't. In 1975, the marriage would be annulled 20 years later, leaving her a single woman. Though she didn't have any children of her own, she did have an ex-stepdaughter, Shirley Mae Robinson, from Oscar's previous marriage. During this time, Esther gained weight, no doubt from the pressure and stress of separation. This was devastating for the 55-year-old as she didn't possess her previously lean dancer's frame. The corpus of her life's work had come from her career as a dancer. Now, it had all come undone. While receiving no favor from the dance troops, the change worked in her favor in the entertainment industry, where the stereotype of a fat black woman opened up more acting opportunities for her. Esther was not a fan of stereotyping, especially amongst the African-American population, as they were often unnecessarily vilified and humiliated in the media. But as demeaning as it was, it was still a way for her to put food on the table. And they said, these things are right. They said, black seat from the back, white seat from the front. They said, if you get out of your, I mean, if the bus gets filled up, you are to uh, stand up for even a white boy to sit. As a founding member of the Negro Theater Ensemble, she established herself as a talented and dedicated performer and managed to land some lucrative deals with the Sharks of Hollywood. Little did she know that this gamble would lead to her breakthrough character. She made notable appearances in the show Maude from 1972 to 1974, spanning nearly 30 episodes, leading to a beautiful friendship between B and Esther. Given the show's success, Esther was offered her own spinoff, and the result was Good Times, which premiered in 1974. When women get to be at our time of life, you know. You mean our time of life? You don't know how old I am, you forget. Aside from her remarkable talent, Roll had a will of iron. When cast for her role in Good Times, she insisted on the addition of a father to the show. Growing up in a large family with a present father figure, she emphasized the importance of portraying a family structure similar to her own, a genuine representation of African-American domestic life. She did so at her peril, considering producer Norman Lear's initial reluctance to include a father in the sitcom. However, the risk paid off, 
and Roll's persistence and conviction proved essential, contributing to the show's success. That's because I loved my father. He was so good to us and for us. And I said, well, I don't understand. What is it about black men that you want to show them as fathers? It became television's first black sitcom to feature a two-parent family. Esther Roll played the role of the family's stern yet loving matriarch, Florida Evans. As the series progressed, tensions arose, particularly regarding the character J.J. Evans, played by Jimmy Walker. J.J.'s humorous antics became immensely popular with audiences, shifting the show's focus towards him and his comedic escapades. Lucky person, you got the number right, because you are talking to kid a dynamite! Esther Roll and her on-screen husband, John Amos, felt that J.J.'s character was pulling the show away from its intended focus on parenting in a black household. Amos was particularly distraught with the new creative direction, believing that the show should have highlighted the aspirations of his other on-screen children, Michael's ambition to become a Supreme Court justice and Thelma's goal of becoming a surgeon. This would have been an accurate depiction of a minority and John was adamant about his stance. The impasse between actor and director culminated with John Amos's departure from the series. I wasn't the most diplomatic guy, like I said in those days, and they got tired of having their lives threatened over jokes. So they said, I'll tell you what, why don't we kill him off and we'll get on with our, we'll all get on with our lives. His character, James Evans, was written off at the beginning of the fourth season, creating a significant shift in the dynamics of the show. Damn, damn, The departure of the quaint father figure that she worked so hard to establish, coupled with the clumsy comedic direction, left Esther Roll dissatisfied. And she too would make her exit at the end of the fourth season. In an attempt to fill the void left by Roll's departure, the show introduced new characters and storylines. However, ratings continued to decline. Realizing the impact of Esther Roll's absence, producers sought her return for the sixth and final season. Roll agreed to return under specific conditions, including writing J.J.'s character more respectably and a salary increase. She was, before anything else, a woman of principle. I came out there in about 73, and that was just after and during the explosion of black films. So there was um, quite a lot of activity at the time. I went there from the stage to do a specific job, the Maud show. I've never um, run around Hollywood looking for work because I have, uh, I'm a sensitive person. Despite bringing back familiar faces and futile attempts to regain viewership, Good Times concluded with its sixth season. The series finale, titled The End of the Rainbow, provided each character with a happy ending as they moved out of the Chicago projects where they had resided for the past five years. After the conclusion of Good Times, she appeared in various made-for-television movies and films, such as Driving Miss Daisy and My Fellow Americans. She had a significant part in Summer of My German Soldier, winning the first Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Miniseries or Movie in 1979 for her work in the television movie. Roll also played a credited role in 1989's The Mighty Quinn and starred in her last film, Train Ride, released in 2000 despite being filmed in 1998. Tragically, Esther Roll passed away on November 17, 1998 in Culver City, California, due to complications from diabetes, just nine days after her 78th birthday. Her former Good Times co-star Jimmy J.J. Walker was the only Good Times regular cast member who did not attend her funeral. They probably really didn't care for one another. She was a devout member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, where she was laid to rest in Westview Community Center in Pompano Beach, Florida, a birthplace. 
When she died, she left an estate valued at over 1.7 million, including 200,000 in cash, a $400,000 home, and 1.72 million in treasuries. In addition, she owned 1,000 shares of Beth Dames Corporation, several mutual funds, and a 2% interest in El Toro Limited. Her example continues to inspire a generation of actors and creators, leaving a lasting effect on the landscape of television and paving the way for more inclusive storytelling. She will always be known as the first woman to receive the NAACP Chairman's Civil Rights Leadership Award for helping raise the image of Blacks. Now, that's truly one great legacy to leave behind.